Hi, thanks for tuning in. This is Randy Marcotte in Perfect Video Conferencing. There's an ongoing open request that we've had from a decent amount of our customers around the screensaver settings uh, that have now changed in the Zoom world. So we wanted to do a quick recording to give everyone a sense of some of the new and awesome options. Uh, on screen right now, you'll see actually our Zoom support page. So at perfectvc.com, you can go to products uh, and maintenance. Under that support, you'll see a Zoom page. Uh, you're welcome to pop over to that and see how to contact us or how to contact Zoom uh, for support. Uh, on the top right, too, you'll also see some live chat. Yeah, click that, enter your name and a phone number, and we'll um, you'll actually get to our, our help desk. And we can support you from there. Uh, if you're curious about our functionality in the Zoom Rooms world, zoom-rooms.us, that's us. Uh, come in and uh, poke around. We'll build a great Zoom room for you. The specific settings that we're looking to modify today are the Zoom Room kiosk settings. So historically, the Zoom Room uh, kiosk settings have been about both the tablet that controls the Zoom Room and the PC or Mac that uh, supports the uh, the room. What has changed is Zoom now has a new display setting where you can send URLs or images uh, through the Zoom room setting and you don't need to use the Mac Mini or Nook to manage the screensaver. So uh, the, the net of this is ultimately you're going to want to suppress the screensaver settings on the device that's running the Zoom room and actually use the Zoom room for screensaver settings. So let me show you the before and the after. I'm going to go in and uh, search on Zoom kiosk settings, and you'll see what comes up. This is the Zoom help page. They've got a really good database on on items there, and clearly right here you see Zoom kiosks or kiosk setting for Zoom rooms. It's that space that we're going to go into and notice that they've got that for the iPad. Mostly the iPad instructions will put you in a space where you know how to do guided access. That's a way of locking down the iPad to only run the one app obviously the Zoom controller app that you want your end users touching. That way there your end users don't go in and uh, use the iPad for something else. That's not uh, its primary purpose. I am currently logged into one of the Zoom rooms uh, in our infrastructure. It's over at Hatch today. It's a co-working facility, so if you need a desk space, let us know. We'll do an introduction. So in order to get to the Mac settings, and this happens to be a Mac deployment, uh, I have to enter a lock code on the Zoom rooms. Then once I've entered that lock code, I am now in the settings of the Mac, and in doing so, I can go to System Settings, and I'm really looking for uh, Power, uh, which you see here, and then um, the Screen Saver. So I'm going to go into Power first. Under Energy Saver, these are the four. Uh, you want to slide that over to Never, and then choose these four items. Particularly, uh, make sure you disable the enable power nap. Uh, you and I may love a good power nap. Um, it doesn't function well with screensaver settings for Zoom. And then many of our customers will go in and schedule a weekly uh, reboot of the systems. Not entirely necessary, but it does uh, reboot the PC or Mac. Uh, you have to do a command line on the PC in order to get this to function, but you can schedule a weekly reboot if you're worried about uh, kind of a fresh start on a Monday. Schedule this for a You'd check this button, you would do a uh, restart, and you can choose Sunday, 12 a.m., so that way there Monday morning you know uh, as your users come in the, the system has had a, a fresh start. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on for this one. Uh, we also get alerts on this system, so come Monday morning we're going to get some notices that the system was rebooted. Uh, all right, so I'll get out of there. Uh, the next one I had mentioned was screensaver. Uh, this one still has screensaver items turned on, and so we went in and chose some images and put that in a slideshow. So we're essentially showing the clock, and I'll just do a preview so you can see what that looks like. It's essentially sending across the screen not only the time, but some instructions for the end user uh, to go ahead and tap the iPad uh, to start uh, the Zoom room. So this is option number one. It's the historical best practice in Zoom is giving the user a screen timeout based on the Mac or the PC and then some instructions on what to do to not break the room and how to wake it up so the screensaver stays persistent. Your TV can certainly go to sleep after some interval if you 
prefer to not have the monitor stay on, but uh, the assumption of this is that the room, the TV, will be ready for the user to tap the screen on the iPad and wake the system, thereby being ready to, to run a Zoom room call. That's the old way of doing it. So today, uh, what we're doing uh, typically is disabling uh, the screensaver and going into the Zoom room settings. So I'll go into the same Zoom settings on that particular unit. I have to log in, get to my management side of it. So I'm going to do that. So I'm logged in, and then I can go to my Zoom rooms. And that one happens to be Hatch Broadway Long Wharf. And then when I edit that room, there are some new tabs across the top. The display, yeah, 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 that's fine. I'll confirm. The display content is really what allows me to have Zoom send particular URLs that I want to be the sleep settings. So this will then not have the Mac see that the Zoom software has gone to sleep. So when I enable this, the Mac sleep settings never get triggered because, again, the Mac never sees that the Zoom has stopped. So I'm, in this particular case, I'm able to put the Hatch website, the perfect video conferencing support page, some information about us, and then how to contact uh, support. So as a preview goes, we think this gives the end user in the room a, a slightly better experience, and it gives you the ability to change uh, what you do or don't want shown on screen. So it takes a moment to load in a in a preview environment. Uh, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. There we go. So then the the interval that we have on these are up to you to set. The default is every five seconds. Um, we change these to twelve. Uh, some of the rooms will have a longer interval just so that the in-room user gets to see. Uh, in-room user gets to see whatever web pages you want to render. So in this particular case, we're showing a couple of perfect video conferencing pages and then the Hatch uh, website uh, specifically. So again, it's um, the old way was to have the Mac wait for the Zoom room to show up um, in, uh, in a sleep mode. Once it was out of that sleep mode, uh, it was then rendering whatever desktop images you were rendering for a, a um, a screensaver now because we've got this setting, uh, we're not going to do that. The other thing to know is that when you add content, there's a company-wide library you can use. So here's a content library that's system-wide for perfect video conferencing. I'm going to go ahead and ignore that call for now. Um, there's a company-wide uh, setting, and then you can actually add images directly from your computer. So in the event you liked uh, images that you had in the old screensaver mode, you could actually upload them directly uh, to that particular system. So what our customers and PVC is doing is for each room, the screensaver settings can be different. So if you have an office in Boston that has one behavior and one set of users, you can customize the backdrop or the URLs specifically for that room and those users in that terrain. So that uh, is the 10,000 foot overview. If you've got any questions, open a ticket with us at support at perfectvc.com. And if I have not answered any of the, the needs that you have, call me directly. Again, it's Randy at 516-282-2812. Cheers. Thanks for watching.